do. So, Ethan, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, we I hear you great. We can. Perfect. So go ahead. What do you got today? Uh, uh, let me just mute the stream. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All the callers take a hint. Um, yeah, please do mute the stream when you get on the line. So uh, I wanted to ask, um, I'm an objectivist, and I get... I have my own basis for my morality, but I feel, you know, to tie it into the theme for today of where do you guys get your morality and how do you justify that? Oh, was that our theme today? I was going to say, I don't know if that was our theme, but yeah, you're welcome I, I to mean, talk about it. Sorry, to tie it in, of, I'm sure people will be getting the question if they come out to their relatives. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of why, how can you be moral without God or, or things sure. like that. Sure. So. Okay. So, <laughs> so, are you asking? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't. I mean, I've got thoughts on it. I, yeah, go I can ahead. Try to trim it. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I want to just you know forewarn everyone that I'm usually the black sheep when it comes to my moral thinking. <laughs> so not everybody agrees with me, and I understand that I'm in a minority on this, but. In general, I think that coming out of, uh, as a member of a social species, we are endowed with the capacity to recognize one another above and beyond other species, right? So wolves recognize other wolves in a way that allows them to cooperate with other wolves like they can't cooperate with anything else. And human beings are very similar, right? We're a social species and we cooperate as groups and teams and that's pretty much the way that we've evolved to survive, and that's why we're a member of a social species, or why we're labeled that way. That social aspect comes with all kinds of things, right, that other social species also exhibit, like we have a capacity for guilt, we have a capacity for empathy, and this is in general, right? Of course, some people, just like any attribute, we have, I can say we're bipedal, but that doesn't mean every human being born has two legs, right? I mean, there's always gonna be anomalies. But in general, we have these weird little feelings and uh, responses that help us interact with each other in a way that we tend to not really lend outside the species quite as broadly. And other social species have the same inclinations. And for me, the idea of morality comes from that recognition as you being like me. So like me and you are alike. We are both human and we are both part of this group that is more cohesive than things outside the group. So I have to recognize your agency and I have to respect and regard that when I recognize that like me, I have agency and I like that agency respected and regarded. So I, want, I need to understand you're the same, that I understand that you think like me and you behave like me. Not that we are, uh, not that people don't have diversity, but that in general, basic things like, I don't like to have somebody come up to me and beat me up, means that I'm probably not gonna go around beating you up because I'm gonna assume that this probably would be unpleasant for you as well, and that if I try to do it, you're probably gonna defend yourself in the way that I might defend myself, and it's gonna be a bad scene. So that's where I tend to think the foundation for what, you know, it's funny because religious people, when they talk about morality and they talk about how uh, you know that these human beings are special and it's like I agree we do know that they're special because we're a member of that group and we recognize we're members of that group and that's what makes it special that's what makes it useful and helpful and beneficial and something that you want to keep having be useful and beneficial to yourself and to the group um, so that would be where where I kind of start and then I would build from there but that's where my if somebody said where do I get my morality that's kind of the foundation of where I begin building yeah yeah, I think, uh, you know, my foundation is probably, you know, I have certain values and because I value these things and I, I can observe that other people also value these things, um, I'm not going to do something to them that I wouldn't want them to do to me. So it's a very much a reciprocal kind of thing. Okay. I mean, is that, it's, it's probably not surprising, right? I mean, I wouldn't think that that's a surprising response. But No, maybe. not at all. <laughs> um, I, I think that that runs into a problem when you have somebody that lacks empathy or is in, unable to empathize with other people, that they might not understand, uh, you know, 
that even though I like it, somebody else might not like it. Yeah, there's always um, going to be anomalies, and that's why you have to have laws, right? Then you start, and, and like I say, even wolves will discipline yeah. other wolves in a pack when somebody's not behaving like they should be. And the, the one example that I saw that was like most amazing to me was when there, and I've used this on the show before, there was uh, a, like a, a male and female pair of wolves that were mating, and then you had the rest of the pack. Mm -hmm. And one of the male wolves kept trying to mate with the, with the alpha female, and he's not supposed to because he's not the alpha. So the, the, mm -hmm. it wasn't just the alpha male that attacked him, it was the whole pack that attacked him, basically saying, you don't right. do this. And so he kept trying, like every time they would go do something, he would run back and try to get with the female. And this went on for a while until the entire pack literally exiled him. They ran him off their territory completely, and he was on his own, which is a very dangerous situation for a social animal. He was left outside, and then how they knew this, I don't have a clue, but I guess it's probably like that for people. You know, if you're observing yeah. people, you're probably like, how did they know this? Um, that wolf came back. And the pack allowed him to come back, and he issued like what was like a, an acceptable challenge for the status of mating with that female. And then him mm -hmm. and the alpha male battled it out while the rest of the group just sat back and watched, and he won. And then he was the new leader. And I was like, wow, that was a really interesting uh, you know, thing to watch. And for me, it's kind of similar with people. I mean, if a person starts doing things that are detrimental to the group, I think the group right. will step up and say, okay, we need to not do this, <laughs> right? Like, you need to not do right. it. And I think it would, if the person kept doing it, of course, the response is going to escalate. As the, the more detrimental it is to the group, the more the response will escalate until you end up with a situation where you either are exiling someone, killing them, locking them up for life, or whatever it takes to ensure that they don't continue damaging the group. Okay. Um. Thanks for the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think it's interesting that, especially with religious people who tend to think that only human beings operate this way, that other species don't have this kind of structure. And, you know, obviously we have like a huge infrastructure compared to other species, but um, what they do have is very interesting. And I think it's very telling about what it says to us as a species when, when we have these magical inclinations that religious people like to say God gave us, right? These God-given things. It's like, it's not God-given. It's, it's other animals have it too, and you just have to observe them with, a, with an ounce of respect. Right. Yeah, all social um, animals have some sort of social rule that they follow, or, or set of rules that yeah. they follow for interacting with each other. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of like part of the definition of a social species is that you have yeah. a social structure that the you're, less you're social involved in. you are, the less you're going to see that. So there's some yeah. animals that are not as social that maybe come together for territorial disputes and mating. So you'll have an animal that t generally tends to run around on its own, but then every now and then mm -hmm. it comes together with another one of its species just to mate, or it comes together with another one of its species to fight over a boundary. Um, and in those situations, what you're looking at is when they do fight and when they do uh, mate, there are still protocols, right? You fight over that boundary, and the loser gives up. They go right. away. You know, it's, and and when you're when they're doing the mating, there's always these protocols about mating. Whether you know the the female may or may not have certain amount of power in that in that uh, response, and right. it's just it's kind of interesting. And you know, sometimes they'll do mating with like multiple partners. Sometimes they'll go off individually. I mean, it's just it's wild. I think that it's very interesting to observe the similarities, especially in conversations about morality when you're talking to religious people. Sure. Humans like to think they're special and they came up with everything <laughs> by themselves. We are one. <laughs> yeah. um, we are special. That, that also reminds me of um, the story of, I think it's like monkeys within a room and there's a piece of fruit on top of a hill. And if one of them goes up to try and, and take the fruit, you... The tester sprays them all with water. Yeah, be mm. careful because that's more myth than fact. Mm -hmm. There, if you look it up online, there is a study that it, that that story begins to be based on. But the one I heard was so exaggerated from what when I went and looked it up and found out what the actual study was, it was so different than the story that I was told. So I know the thing you're relating to, how they like beat them up when they go after the thing that they're not mm -hmm. supposed to eat. 
Um, it wasn't quite as dramatic as the, the tale that I came across online that I was exposed to. And for a while, I actually just kind of accepted it and was like, oh, that's interesting, and just adopted it. And then when, one day I looked it up and I was like, oh my gosh, that didn't really happen like that. So be careful uh, with that one. I'll fact check myself. <laughs> yeah, dude, I had to. I mean, so I, I understand. And I'm, I'm only pointing out because I did look it up and it was one of those things where I was like, ooh, no, it didn't really happen like that. But relating to that story, it's important for us as as intelligent you know sentient people yeah is, is to you know check on our justifications for the things that we do and sure. not to rely on them as traditional or or just to accept them as cultural standards is right. to sometimes challenge them and right and ma make sure they're there for the right reasons and even if it's something yes. that maybe has served right just because you've always done it that way and there was a good reason why something may have been done that way doesn't mean that things don't change and that you don't right. have to revise or adjust those rules to make them better just because it's old doesn't mean it's good <laughs> That's right. just because it's new doesn't mean it's good either <laughs> yeah there you go so you can't judge things by age all right thanks guys sure thanks. thank you, you guys thank you. having and me on I, I,